Hello everyone, welcome to the video series on MCQ answer explanation. In this video, I will explain the questions about neurohumoral transmission. Let us see the first question. Neurohumoral transmission involves option A, synthesis of neurotransmitter, option B, storage of neurotransmitter, option C, release of neurotransmission, option 4, all of the above. See, I made this question to make you aware of the steps involved in neurohumoral transmission. See, neurohumoral transmission means humor means body fluids. Neurons synthesize neurotransmitter and release into body fluids, either it could be synaptic cleft or to the organ site. So the process is called as neurohumoral transmission. Whatever the information is there in the in neuron is transmitted to the another neuron through neurotransmitters. This process is called as neurohumoral transmission. The steps are neuron at the end of neuron, neurotransmitter is synthesized, it is stored in a vesicle and released to show the uh, uh, effects of this neurotransmitter. So all the steps are involved. So the option is all of them. Let us see the next question. Which of the following is a neurotransmitter? Options are tyrosine, dopa, epinephrine, norepinephrine. Now understand this question. See, this process involves in sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system neurotransmitter is norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline. Understand this one. Epinephrine, adrenaline are synonyms. Now what happens is the biosynthesis of neurotransmitter starts from tyrosine. Tyrosine is an amino acid. Tyrosine is converted to dopa. Dopa is converted to dopamine. Dopamine is converted to norepinephrine. This norepinephrine is stored in vesicle and whenever its requirement is there, it is released into the synaptic uh, cleft. Now see, so out of the four, norepinephrine is the only one neurotransmitter. Tyrosine is an amino acid. It is not a neurotransmitter. Dopa is an amine. Uh, I am uh, sorry, DOP is also an amino acid, it is not a neurotransmitter. Norepinephrine is the neurotransmitter. Epinephrine is a hormone, not a neurotransmitter. Understand this thing. Epinephrine is released from adrenal gland. On the top of kidney, we have adrenal glands at there. From the gland, epinephrine is released. It is a hormone. Neurotransmitters are the chemicals which are released from neurons. But epinephrine or adrenaline is releasing from gland. It is a hormone. Don't get confused. Now understand the process. Tyrosine with the help of an enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase converted to dopa. Dopa with the help of an enzyme dopa decarboxylase converted to dopamine. Dopamine with the help of an enzyme dopamine beta hydroxylase is converted to norepinephrine. This is what is the biosynthetic pathway of norepinephrine. Dopamine is also a neurotransmitter. It is not there in the option. Norepinephrine is the only option. So answer is the neurotransmitter is norepinephrine. Now let's go get into the next question. Now, excitatory postsynaptic potential causes. Now, understand this one. Uh, look at the options. Depolarization, hyperpolarization, repolarization, no change. Now, understand the question. See, whenever a neurotransmitter releases, it, it acts on the another neuron and changes the potential. Usually, uh, the resting membrane potential, that means cell membranes or neurons at rest, they have a negative potential. In the neurons, it is minus 70 millivolts. So when a neurotransmitter binds, attaches, it can change the potential. If the potential from negative, it is converting into positive, it is called as depolarization and that potential is known as excitatory postsynaptic potential. Understand this one. Excitation means depolarization. Depolarization means from negative turning into positive potential. So excitatory postsynaptic potential converts the negative potential to positive potential, hence it causes depolarization. Hyperpolarization is different. Minus 70 is there. Further increasing minus is called as hyperpolarization. That is called as inhibitory postsynaptic potential. So you have two different effects of neurotransmitters are there. They may cause depolarization, which is called as excitatory postsynaptic potential. They may further increase negative potential, which is called as inhibitory postsynaptic potential. So the neurotransmitter which is causing excitatory postsynaptic potential is known as excitatory neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter which is causing inhibitory postsynaptic potential uh, is called as inhibitory neurotransmitter. So this is what is the cross difference, excitatory, inhibitory, excitatory depolarization, inhibitory, hyperpolarization. So the answer here is excitatory postsynaptic potential causes depolarization. Let us move on to the next question. Example for new inhibitory neurotransmitter is options are glutamate, GABA, aspartate, acetylcholine. See, I have just explained to you. Excitatory neurotransmitter causes depolarization. Inhibitory neurotransmitter causes hyperpolarization. Among the four, GABA acts on chloride channel and chloride gets into the cell. Chloride has got negative charge. When it gets into the cell, the negative charge further increases causes hyperpolarization. So answer here is two option two GABA. 
Now see the remaining all, aspartate, glutamate, estelcoin, all of them are excitatory neurotransmitters. They cause excitatory postsynaptic potential. GABA inhibitory neurotransmitter, it causes inhibitory postsynaptic potential. So these are the questions about uh, neurohumoral transmission, all the best.